Okay, we're going to start in two minutes. If you have not signed in, the sign in book is in the back. Please make sure you do so. Okay, so most of you were at the meeting. 
Um, that is where uh, it's a public hearing, and um, we have a presentation from the um, people that are proposing this upzoning, and the community board took a vote. So the community board voted, um, to, they voted it down, and that's the first step. Then it has to go through the borough president. She gives an advisory vote like we do. Um, then other people have to weigh in on it. The city council weighs in on it. Um, the city planning, which is the crucial vote, weighs in on it, and the mayor weighs in on it. So we have a long, a long way. Many of you have asked me when I thought that it would end. It's really impossible to, to say because each party that it goes to has, some have 30 days, some have 60 days. They could take the 60 days, they could th take 30 days, they could take 10 days. So it really, you know, doesn't know. My feeling is that it probably will be sometime at the end of the summer or fall of the earliest. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, so I, I wanted, you know, just to go through that. Um, many people have asked also if we have reached out to the developers, and this is not something that you know most of us have uh, common knowledge of. But I want you to know that we have tried to reach everybody, and we did reach out to the developers. Um, a board member and myself met with them, and we explained the reasons why you know we don't want the upzoning. We went through the history, which I'm not going to go through that because you all know it by now. Um, and we also explained to them that, you know, if, when, when you have um, this type of zoning versus um, the type of zoning that um, is as of right, it's a totally different scenario when you go through. When you have as of right zoning, then that's the time we negotiate because it, you, what usually happens is Let's say they say, okay, we're gonna put 17 floors, and we say, well, you can do that as of right, which they can. And you know, we explain to them, well, you know, we need more parking, we need you to lower the amount of, of floors because you know our services can't handle it, and, and we negotiate. But with this, we can't negotiate because it's the, it's either we have the zoning, exactly. Or, or we don't have it. So there really is no negotiation. We explain that to them. Um, you know, we each side dug the heels in, as you can expect, and we expected that. But we gave them the respect that they wanted to talk to us. They reached out to us, and, and we spoke to them. And, you know, and I want to just go a little forward on that word respect. I know that what's happening in our community, you know, people feel very, very passionate about it. And there's a reason why we do, and sometimes tempers flare. It's to our benefit if we keep, you know, the the um, the tempers down and give everybody the respect that they deserve and, and hear them. That doesn't mean that we can't say what we need to say. Freedom of speech, you know, sometimes is going by the wayside lately, but freedom of speech is something that we feel very strongly about. So I want you to feel that you can say what you need to say in a respectful way. Um, so, one thing I forgot. Are there any staff members from any official agencies that I should know about? Um, if there's anybody here from an official agency, like a politician's office, or you know anything like that, please let me know, because we want to know that you are here. Um, I don't see anybody, so I'm not gonna, I guess not. Um, I have to catch my breath. Before we begin, um, I, I wanna just bring to everybody's attention Jimmy, um, Jimmy McQuaid. I, I think most of you know him. He was a businessman in this area. He owned Skyler Hill, Hill Funeral Home. Um, he recently passed away. And I, I, he was a friend of mine for 60 years. Um, I you know, know him since childhood. And when I was thinking about his life and you know, what he gave to this community, which is everything, he gave everything. Um, he was full of kindness, full of compassion, and 
the thing that I respected most about him is his involvement in this community. Um, I don't know, this community is never gonna be the same, but I think we're gonna do two things. One thing that we're gonna do is in front of his building um, on Tremont Avenue and Summer Place, there'll be an overlay. And, and that, when we pass, you know, we'll remember him and say a little prayer and whatever. But I think the best thing that we can do is remember his involvement and take, take you know, heed in that. And I think now is the right time to do it because you are all here and you are all 400 of us at the different meetings. And everybody is coming out and unifying around something that's gonna hurt us. There are a lot of things that can hurt us besides this. So we can't just be involved with just this. We have to, when we win this, the next thing we have to do is maybe tackle crime or maybe tackle summer is coming and we're gonna hear a lot of music and it's probably not the kind we wanna hear. So, you know, there are things that if we join together and if we join with our politicians, we can be unstoppable. We really can be unstoppable. And I am just so proud that this community has come together. And I, I think that we are strong enough to bring in all of our politicians. Some of them have already, you know, been brought in but we have to support them and they have to support us. That's the only way in this world today with things as bad as they are. And I'm not even gonna go into what happened today because some of you may know and some of you may not, but we all need to say a prayer for that because this world is just changing beyond our control and very, very fast. So um, I don't know if Marjorie's here. Marjorie's here. Oh, okay. Um, so I do, before I invite you up, Andrea, I just want to say that, like I've been saying, the time is right for us all to work together. And um, I, and I think many of us here, are very excited to work with you. I have heard you say many times, particularly through a letter at the last time, that you support us, you will work with us, and you are against the upzoning. So I know that it's not just you. Um, it's you and all of your colleagues, but deference is something, and I don't know if everybody knows deference, so I'll just go quickly through what it is. It's something that makes a lot of sense. This is Marjorie's community. She knows this community better than any other city council person because she lives here, and I think she's lived here for many, many years. So she can explain to the other council people what is happening here and why it's so crucial for us to win this. So I always remember Jimmy back that saying, whether you think I'm with you or whether you think I'm against you, give me everything that you can give me. Give me every letter, give me every petition. So we have a petition for you, I'm gonna leave it up here. And you can use this to say to your colleagues at the city council, I went to a meeting and this is what they gave me. So, you know, they really feel very strongly. So. Please join me in welcoming our new city Good evening, everyone. I am your council member, Marjorie Velasquez, and it's great seeing you all. We planned this a couple of months ago, knowing that I'd be a little wrapped up in the budget, so. We're still here. Uh, we still have a month and a half to go for budget, so wanted to walk you through that process um, because I'm both a member of the Finance Committee and the Budget Negotiations um, team, which means that basically we have an opportunity to discuss our needs, right, and take a front seat as to what our community can be. So for us, locally, our investments have been uh, typically for our schools, our firehouses, and of that nature. And so it's time to step it up. Um, we know about what's happening in Rodman's Neck, right? We literally hear it all the time, uh, right? Am I right? Yes. So we're looking forward to expanding that and making sure that it's not just a sound barrier, but we are also considering having a tactical village uh, and updating it. As you see what's happening within New York City, um, our officers need more real-time, real-life uh, opportunities, and having that 
modernized for them is essential for our own safety, right? And we need to make sure that we're taking it back to basics and making sure that all our government employees have all they need, including our NRPD, our FDNY, EMS. Um, following up with FDNY, there are several firehouses here that actually need new generators. Um, they have not had one in, what, 20, 30 years? That's what they told us. And so we are um, actually funding those uh, as capital improvements because, as you well know, with Ida happening, um, our community really needed the power and the support. Um, most recently, what you saw at Throsneck and the uh, volunteer is that we have the solar panels coming in, right? Um, and that is through Solar One. We have that one project, um, and it's going to go live in a couple of weeks, and then another one actually at Villa Maria. What that means is to our community, God forbid we have a power outage like we did, um, we have resources for our community to go get their um, cell phones charged and just have that opportunity for power. We're also looking at expanding what programs our schools have, right? Uh, when we're talking about fully funding our schools, what does that mean? It means that our kids need better after school programs. They need other things to keep them occupied. But we're looking at one of our most local schools right here by uh, 192. They are participating in the Summer Rising program. It gives our children an opportunity to not just consider it as summer school, but it's a summer program for all our kids. Um, and that opportunity um, has been possible because of our working relationship with the mayor. And we look forward to expanding that throughout our district because our kids need a place to play. More importantly, our kids need an area that's a safe space for them, especially during the summer. We're also looking at expanding the Summer Youth Employment Program. Right now, we're expanding it to over 100,000 kids. Um, so you'll probably, in, if you visit my office, you'll probably see a bunch of them working for us during the summer. And more importantly, it's an opportunity. So if you have kids that are interested in working in our office under this program, feel free to reach out to Alex. This is Alex from my team. He's my Deputy Chief of Staff. And he will gladly um, give you our address, the information we need our kids to see that it is possible to work in the community. It is possible to work for the government, and it is possible to have this as their future, right? Um, I stand before you as the first person of color elected in this district, uh, breaking barriers. And what we're doing together is making sure that folks understand what unity looks like, right? I came from here. I'm about this life. I'm about this community because we're all a fabric of this community. <laughs> we're all different, but what makes us Topper is because we work together. Good, bad, or indifferent, we're here. And so that's where we're up to. Um, recently, what we've requested from 1PP are additional officers for PSA 8, uh, 45, 49. Um, unfortunately, there were some incidents at the park that required us requesting an additional tour because there were some people breaking in about one, two in the morning. So we made sure that there would be a tour. Me and the borough president, Vanessa Gibson, uh, reached out and made sure that we had that extra tour to make sure our businesses are safe. Uh, when we're talking about small businesses, right now there are several grants within uh, the state that we're facilitating with the small businesses. So if you are a small business or if you know a small business that needs help, it's a COVID-19, if they were operating during the time, uh, March 2020, and they suffered any loss, please reach out to us. So that way we can coordinate and see if we can get them that grant. Um, more importantly, we have been working with our constituents one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, unfortunately, part of that also involved a fire that basically removed 35 families from their homes. Um, and that was by Brian Lander at 49th Precinct. Um, and we've been working diligently not only to provide them uh, permanent housing, but making sure that they're whole. They've lost everything. And I think, uh, once again, the borough president, also the folks involved in uh, Twin Parks Fire, because they actually were able to store all these great items that were donated at the King's Bridge Armory. We were able to give our families an opportunity to get resources from that. And that came out from us, right? Morris Park Community Association did a uh, collection, and they were able to fill that place up. And that's what happens, right? We don't know how good our work is until we're faced with these calamities and we were together. Um, and look, it came full circle from Morris Park back to the families there. And as I finish up, I really just want to take a moment of silence for the lives lost today. And 
Texas. Thank you so much. She said several questions, so um, if you ask a question, make sure that it's just one question so that other people have time to speak. Um, I'm sure if I if you have a question, please raise your hand. Joe? Um, what steps are being taken as far as the partner situation is concerned to gather the necessary no votes that you're going to need to kill this thing in council? I already said no, so. No, I'm sorry. That's as far what? As reaching out to uh, the that's city what? planning commission, reaching out to the borough president's office. Has there been any? So the borough president is going to have her own right. Uh, right. Session. Has there been anything written out in your official stationery showing why you oppose this thing? Yes, and I put it all over my socials. You saw that. Uh, right? I'm talking about address to the specific parties. Something of that nature. Yes, I literally said. No, from the get-go, and I think I was very clear with you guys when I sat with you here in the church. It was you, it was just me, it was very day, and I have a difference. And I, that I, information I, I, I that we collected, we provided it. Problem, and that. like, I, unfortunately, I think people want to miss my words, and that's unfortunate. And I think, Mary Jane, you certainly know me um, more than most people, right? Um, because you know my family. Um, yes, I do. You know, Jeff's love, and I don't flinch. I'm very okay. clear and concise. So, with, with what, what I'm asking specifically, have you reached no. out to anyone? What kind of response have you gotten? Have you reached out to the council members? Have you reached out to the city planning commission? Have you reached out to the borough president's office? I mean, specifically on this, not just a generalized, you know, statement or proclamation. So we need to allow the process to play out, right? So yes, I've reached out to. And what kind of response have you gotten so far? I said, hey. This is where the community stands. And they said, okay, and we're going to give the community an opportunity to voice that opinion, right? Because then there's the borough president has her piece, and there's a community um, piece as well. It is always going to be this process. And I encourage everyone to understand that it is a process, and you have a voice throughout and voice out your concerns, right? Yes. 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 So, Joe, so, well, let's give somebody else a, a okay. chance, okay? Anybody else have a, a question for our new council person? <coughs> Was that clear enough? Wait. Um, no. okay. oh. I'm going to remain seated because sometimes the people in back can't see if I'm standing up. Uh, we can hear you, right? Can everybody hear her? Yeah. No, I just want to block the view. Block <laughs> <laughs> the view. So anyhow, when you say, I'm opposed to this plan as it is, I don't like the as it is part. Yeah. Just oppose the plan. Leave it alone. Like, why can't they put garden apartments for disabled veterans, uh, you know, people who need housing? We're not denying them. We just don't want the skyscraper type of housing and the congestion so many apartments will bring. As I said when I entered before, Michael Benedetto at the meeting at Father and Abba Hall said, Moses, years ago, wanted to abstain Pelham Bay Park all around the peninsula of Throngs Neck. I was 20 years old. I went door to door after working in Manhattan all day, getting signatures against that. It would have destroyed our beach clubs. The whole waterfront would have been gone from this area. We can't have big projects like that. People move here. They, a couple meet in Manhattan. Oh, they're in love. Next thing you know, they have a baby. Now they move to Brooklyn, because that's better for the baby in the preschool than Manhattan. Now they want to have another baby, and the first one is two and a half, and they want a little house with a yard. Where do they come? They come here. And that's what they come for, to find a one family. My block has every ethnicity you can think of. We all love each other. We get, thank God, let it never change. We all get along. But this is what this community is. We, we don't want to move, and we can't move to Westchester or Nassau. So this is the best 
we can do for middle, I'm a teacher, so I make a fairly decent salary, or I did until I retired, but this is where I can afford to live. I, I had a husband who didn't make as much, he became disabled. I could still maintain my house. And this is what people come here for. And we can't, we just don't want it to change. We want to welcome all those who want to come for this little bit of suburbia we have at this end of the Bronx, which includes Locust Point and Edgeware Park and Silver Beach and Schuylerville, et cetera. And it extends a little bit, not as much for the waterfront, but Morris Park is also lovely. We don't want these little uh, uh, pieces of our Bronx changed. Okay, Connie, let, let her answer so that maybe somebody else can, can have a question. What was there? Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I Connie. No, no, no. Thank you for sharing your advocacy, right? Um, because I think that's what most people are about, right? And it's recognizing the work that you've done. So thank you for your advocacy then and now, okay? I, I see you and I hear you and I want you to know that. Um, as is because that's what's presented, right? And that's it. Like, this is what you're going to present me? That's why I'm saying no. It's like, no. That's why. It's what you're presenting me. Okay, John. Hi, I'm John O'Leary. I'm recently retired from the electrician. I live halfway down the block from Food Town. And the back of my house is on Crosby. The front of my house is on the dead end street. I live across the street from Mary Jane and down the block from Andy. I've been there for 20 some years, right? I have three kids. And the neighborhood was great, beautiful. You know, they redid the school. And now all of a sudden, at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, I never heard so much horn honking in my life because triple park cars, the buses and the ambulances can't get down that block. They can't do it. Crosby is overpacked as it is. A mass no, that we're building. asking, we're, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but sorry. forgive me that we're asking for a traffic study to amend that, right? Um, whether it's eliminating the parking uh, during the morning for so that way it's clearer for the parents to just drop and go. Yeah. So, it, and it is that, and I hear you on that piece, and that's what we're working on together, but go ahead. My kid comes to St. Teresa's, and the principal came out, she made us move, right, Chris? Yep. She made us get out, you moved your car, she called the traffic cops on us. We had to move. That's what but, we had to But, but cops. here, nobody. Yes. We don't have yeah. cops anymore. Right. So sure. that's, no, 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 and, and look. But nobody exactly moves. We'll could attest to Nobody you. moves, they're leaving their cars, they leave their cars, Triple. Don't triple park and the doors open, no, which know, makes it even worse. <laughs> but it, it's terrible and the garbage. The garbage. I never, yes. never had to pick up a piece of garbage on my mother and father in heaven. Now they leave Burger King bags and then right outside my on the trees that they just planted. So it's terrible. Down the block and food town. More towards Loretta's, middle of Loretta's and Pizza and Food Town. Yes. I mean, I uh, Louis, 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 Louis. But. The garbage in the morning. I gotta go out and pick up paper plates and, and water bottles and Burger King bags. It's disgusting. And I that's why we don't want We don't need it, so I, I just I, yeah. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. No, 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 no. And then, like and with regards to sanitation, please let us know. Um, because we're restoring uh, unfortunately the budget had removed a lot of the funding to sanitation previously. So what we're doing this year, and I think you've seen a lot of me, you know, I look, when the new commissioner came about, we certainly did a cleanup with her, um, and she has asked me, what are your most problem areas? So once again, I'm not on the streets, I see them, but right. if I am missing something, let me know. We don't know the, we the three-wheeled bicycles that you stop traffic and oh, cause right. chaos and all this. They surround, my, my daughter just started driving. 18 years old, and they surrounded her car the other day. Like, why don't you get a ticket? She was, she was scared, she was afraid. Take they circled the car. 18 years old. So, well, can you come here for a second? So, everyone, this is. I'm happy you don't have to have a license plate on your car. That's they're, they're illegal. Those are illegal. Those are illegal. Those are illegal. You see so many cars, you see so many cars now with no yes, license please. plates. I'm sorry, where's the cops? Yeah, the bikes. We can't chase out those bikes. But why? What, what, oh, because I, it's a liability. One of those people right, who wind up jumping on the sidewalk speak, or okay. hitting a, a kid, we, we're liable for that. The only time we can catch them is when they stop at a gas station and try to get gas. 
You mean us chasing after Yeah, scooters, right? What was that? You mean electric gas mopeds? No. No, 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 Okay, if you want to speak, please raise your hand. You know, the dirt bikes don't wheel these down. No, don't, yes. yes. What about the license plates? Yeah. Chris, 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 where? Chris, 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 one at a time, one at a time, please, so that everybody can be heard and that we can hear her answer. Um, yeah, so what we do, what I was encouraging them, if you do see one of these illegal ATVs, dirt bikes, please call the 45th, call 311, they come, and if you guys, if they're unattended, they will take them away because they do not belong in our streets because there is a clear difference between those and like the regulated ones, right? There is a clear difference and our community cannot have those vehicles that are not licensed, that just Yes. Poor Will, a headache. More than Saturday, Saturday alone, we just took seven. We got seven in the garage. Right. I, 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 I don't mean to interrupt here. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Is it legal for these electric bikes to be chained to street signs? To street signs, oh, no. no. You might want to inform him that he's got his bike illegally chained to the sign out here on the corner. That's not right now. Sign. That's not illegal, is it? Yeah. To change yes, a bike, it is. To change a bike to a yeah, it is. Yeah, I know, but you're speaking. Raise your hand and wait to be called. So maybe, maybe put in a phone call to the precinct right now to get the truck out there, cut the guy's chain, and get the bike out of here. Yes, yeah, make sure you get the camera on you, little Marxist. Now, get it, get it back to. Please. Let's, okay. let's remember what you on, said. On point. On, on point. Okay? The city council can kill this upzoning by voting it down. The deference. What are you doing to use council member deference? Do you intend to use council member deference to gather the necessary no votes to get this thing killed right then and there? That's where this can happen. I know what you're going to vote. You know what we want, you see it there, you hear us, okay? What actions are you taking or are you going to take to talk to each and every one of your other council members and tell them, I want council member deference, I want you to vote no on this, regardless of what they want. That's what's important. So what is it that you're doing, please? So I thank you for that question. Um, it's, I'm actually, Individual with everybody, and it is having one on ones with them. So, I think if you see me online, um, one of my biggest bills is the open dining bill, and it is working with them. So, talking to my colleagues one on one, going to their district, seeing what works and what doesn't work in their district with that legislation that is uh, that is something that we're working. And in that conversation, it is building that relationship and it is concerning hey, what works in your community, what doesn't, right? It is having those opportunities to have conversations because different communities are different. Some districts are going through rezoning right now, others don't. Some have low density as well. And it's having those conversations with those communities and having a relationship with most of those council members because that's our responsibility to have open conversations. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, if you be a young lady, there's a picture floating around that you and somebody, a council member, having dinner with the developers. Thank you. So I will clarify that. I was having dinner with Alex, and he actually just stopped by and said hi, and I said hi, and I continued having dinner. Now, did you have any intention to answering our questions pertaining to this project? Because I'm sitting here and I'm watching you, and what you shared with us could have been printed on the newsletter. And I did. Okay. So, and, and then one, one. I don't know who you three are. You don't identify yourself, but uh, I think the the woman here asked you to answer some questions. But your your intentions were to leave after you gave us all this community information. But she's here. But she's here. Let's try to be fair. She's here and she's staying. She hasn't left yet. Excuse me, with so, all due respect, she's an intelligent woman who's capable of speaking up for herself. Thank you, okay. I appreciate that. I, I really like appreciate it. Yeah, we've got another guy now. Uh, who's next? 
this guy here. You know, this, 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 so, so ask a question. Ask your question. That's important. Right. Okay. I mean, we're here. I thought we were, this meeting was being held about the project they want to build. Not, it's being held about stuff. everything. It was about every complaint, that included. And, and from where I'm sitting, it seems that the board and council member, you guys are just covering your rear ends. You're just dotting your eyes, crossing your T's, so nobody could come back and point the finger at you guys. You could say we tried, and, and council member, man, question, can, can uh, the process, planning board, council, could their decisions be appealed or the extant stone? So this is why when we're saying when we're having these conversations, it is a process. And thank you for asking that. Um, they have an opportunity if we are unfair, right? If we um, show, what is the correct word here? If we show that we are not giving a fair conversation and they can sue us, so that's why we are having open dialogues, right? We are having open conversations, right? Right. And we are continually saying, if you have something to say, Mary Jane collects them. She gives it to the So when it comes down to it, this is the community response. End of story. Right? Yes. We hope so. Yes. And that's what it is, right? So yes. We are asking folks to come out to the different civics. We are asking folks to come out to the different community boards to have a voice. And when we're saying to have your voice, it is literally filling it out and having the conversation with my office. Yes, I do get the emails, and yes, it is important for you to say, I do not want this because of X, Y, Z. It is, and I do want to hear from you. And I do collect it, and, and the reason, and forgive me for cutting you off, is so that way, if there's any question are we not allowing um, a fair conversation? No, we did, right? When yeah. I sat with them, right? I said, hey, give me, what do you want to see in this community? Let's have this conversation. Would you be open to having a conversation with the developer? You did, yes. and that's it. We are not preventing this conversation. We, as a community, have a position, they have theirs, and it will be a process. That's what we're about. We're about letting the process play out, and we're adults. We have the conversations, and we say respectfully no. And as a council member, I take these, show them to my colleagues, and say, colleagues, they don't want it. And that's it, end of story. You know, okay. maybe at the, at the end of the meeting, it seems to me that maybe there are some questions that you have, um, and maybe some misinformation. So can, can we talk you through the process from my office and tell you what kind of information is relevant for us to provide. I have one more question. What, could, right. what could we, the community, actively do to help or make this, this, make this decision yeah. difficult for the developer? Because no. from where I'm sitting, we have these meetings, but I don't see anybody doing anything outside, outside the meetings. Trust me, it is difficult because at the end of the day, they don't have my vote. Right? Don't shut Don't shut the phone town. That would be the first okay. thing. Oh, that's right. We'll talk about that. Let somebody else ask a question. We're not afraid to I have two comments. One for the NCO and one for Marjorie. Um, for the NCO, I've noticed on my block, Wellman Avenue, near Eric's, between Eric's and Mayflower, cars park on the fire hydrants all oh, yeah. day long. Oh, sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you get them two. Then they parked on the corners that I almost got hit twice tonight trying to get here because I have no view. Uh, they park, they're on the they're on the street, but they're on the corner, they cover the crosswalk, there's no view, there's pickup trucks, jeeps. And unfortunately I drive a Subaru Legacy, so I'm down on the floor. But the point is, I can't see. And they're literally, you know, this way. How many times you called uh, 311? Well, I haven't called 311, but See, they so called the community. Well, a lot of times I'm driving and I'm not, you know, uh, getting frustrated. Okay. And Marjorie, I've noticed there's a lot of three family homes and people don't live there, the owners. They're all absentee. The backyards are a mess, the front is a mess, tenants come and go. 
I mean, is there something you can do? Tax them, you know, do something? <laughs> Have you had the opportunity of calling like 311 and voicing your complaints? I there? called 311. Okay. Did you call send me the number? Board. Now it's just like, whatever. What? Okay. No, no, no. Don't give up. What I request from you next time you call 311, call Alex, email us, give us that complaint number so we can follow up with DOB. Okay. Because I have called 311 and I follow the complaint and they say we can't gain access. So like, you can't walk through the gate and go check out the backyard. The front yard you can see from the sidewalk. So I mean, it's a disaster. And this house is behind my house. There's gonna be one on my corner. There's gonna be now one across the street. And nobody sweeps, nobody cleans the backyard. So, so. just wanted to give you a heads up and I'll send you the dates. Uh, we have several family days coming up movie nights, but we also have a town hall with Senator Biaggi and the appropriate agencies uh, about home ownership, um, and that will be covered. So if you want uh, to be there, um, it'll be a zoo, just because that way we can cover Westchester in the Bronx, uh, and we can just send it to folks. And any notes and resources will also provide it, because home ownership is a responsibility that right. should be taken lightly, and absentee landlords are not it. I mean, I made so many 311 calls about one house, and, and they did get ticketed. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Thank, uh, thank you for listening. Okay. Somebody, yeah, no, we have to take somebody else. Um, so, a couple things. Um, I'm, my name is Denise. I live on Coddington between Gillespie and Edison. And just for the community, as a thank you, um, there is now a stop sign on the corner of Coddington and Ed Edison. And whoever did that, thank you very much. Because I can not tell you the number of accidents that I've seen. I mean, a couple of summers ago, I ran outside, there was a motorbike. Um, somebody just smashed into a car and the guy got thrown from his motorbike and was bleeding in the head. Um, it was really bad. And it, there were multiple accidents there. People still speed up from Crosby to, to um, Trayvon on Coddington, but it's much better, so I appreciate that that happened because my kids ride their bikes on that street, um, so I feel much safer now with the stop sign. Um, and I think the other thing, as far as the general community, Waterbury Park has um, a couple of garbage cans on the library side and one on Bradford. There used to be one on the corner of LaSalle and LaSalle and Edison, and it's no longer there. People still pretend that there's a garbage can there, and they still <laughs> scare the bags there. Okay. So if there's any way of reaching out to the parks and asking them to put an additional can there? That would be sanitation, and yes. Okay, sanitation, because I know it's sometimes give us, the parks give us the corner. Give us the corner, give it to Alex, and we'll handle that. Yeah. That would, but then more importantly, going back to the stop sign, I uh, just want to give uh, folks a heads up as to uh, what the mayor and city council has been requesting from Albany is basically home rule when it comes to traffic. Essentially, we want to control where we're putting uh, not only traffic signs, but uh, also the stop signs, right? So we want traffic lights uh, for areas like that. So we're working on that legislatively, but more importantly, we would like you uh, to give Alex that corner one more time so we can request a traffic study. So maybe it's a four-way stop sign that it needs it to is happen. Now okay, then maybe yeah even like blinking lights and stuff like that. We just need to be a little bit more aggressive with that. So folks, overall, please, if you see um, an intersection that's dangerous, that you have concerns about, A, please call 311, give us that complete number, and we'll follow up with DOT on that, okay? And then the last comment I wanted to make was, um, and I, I forget the lady's name, but she was commenting on people that live in Manhattan and Brooklyn and yada yada. Um, so I grew up in this neighborhood, I moved to Queens when I got married, had a one bedroom apartment, we were having a baby, we moved back. We have a backyard, we have a house, and I, I agree that that's what this neighborhood is about. Um, so now I have two kids, they go to school in the area, um, and we appreciate the neighborhood for the way it is, for the low zoning, low density zoning. Um, and I think to piggyback off what the gentleman was saying, um, if there are Things, if you have suggestions for things that uh, we as a community can do other than coming to these meetings and voicing our dissent 
against the upzoning project. Um, if there are any sort of proactive things that we could do, I would appreciate finding out so that we can be better community activists. Letters, emails, right? To us, to the borough president, uh, to DCP. Uh, that's how we get it, okay? And that's why, like, look, they didn't get it, okay? Thank you so much for that question. Thank you. I live on Haskin Street. It's one short block. Okay. And right around the corner is the restaurant. Which and everybody talked to the you know, Puerto Rico restaurant. Made made in Puerto Rico? Rico? Yeah, made, yeah. And right after the court, the the, the uh, hyphen, they parked their car there. God forbid there should be a fire. Nothing, nothing can come through. And they do this every night, all, to, during the day and during the night. We'll alert PD to drive around. Uh, but certainly, if you see it, uh, if you see it, take a photo, call three one one, because that's how we can get it done, right? They'll track it down, especially if you get photo with the license plate. We want to thank you for coming out because we do need your unconditional, unequivocal support to stop any upsell. And so, as people who were at the uh, the meetings in the past, especially at the one Greek church, there was people from Open New York there that were talking, and we all know that you were endorsed by Open New York. So again, I'd like to ask you: Is your intention to renounce Open New York and give back the endorsement because? Open New York does not represent this district, your district. We don't want upzoning. We don't need upzoning. So we'd like to know, will you give it back? Will you say out loud that you will not take that endorsement? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, this community comes first to me. And you know that. Well, when you say publicly that you will not support their attempts on upzoning this community. I already said that I'm not voting for this. Well, you're still endorsed by your parents. It's deference. It's a little bit more complicated to explain, but it's basically it's you say you don't want this in your relationships with your colleagues, they will respect your decision because they know where you're coming from. That's what deference is. Are we going to have that? Are they going to be able to get that uh, support from your colleagues? Pretty much. I, I, I'd like to say I'm <coughs> Okay, so that, that's what we want to hear. No, that's that, that you're, you're actually going to solicit the deference. That's what we want to hear. We also want to make it very clear this is only a zoning issue. It has nothing to do with housing. It has nothing to do with the type of housing or what they could build if they should prevail. This is strictly zoning. We have the zoning right now, the R4A, the R3A, that VACA fought for us and uh, Maya Bloomberg fought for us, uh, Carry On fought for us. They all unanimously gave us this zoning because when they looked at the 300 blocks in this neighborhood, they saw the problem. They saw the overdevelopment and we got the zoning. Bavona and his gang have owned that property throughout. They've let it deteriorate. Now I know for a fact the uh, better grow property I know three real estate brokers who have approached them with a tenant, and they were told in the last, this is in the last three or four years, they were told, no, I don't want to put a tenant there. Because they're holding this property for tax credits on other properties that they own to show, to show the estate or the government 
that they've got a loss yeah, so that they can get lower tax a lower tax payment because of other things they own they own properties in queens yes. and other places right. so and again three brokers that i know personally said i went to them with a tenant and i was refused i had people that wanted to pay rent and we were told no so they're keeping and i i can point these people out they're keeping the property in bad condition purposely and now they're trying to take our zoning away from us so is there anything you don't understand about that is there any questions we can answer for you no and i think what you need to do though once again when, when we were talking about what can be done right andrew it literally is writing that out keeping it in the stack, right? When we're talking about public participation. It's in that stack. Yeah, no, but that's what we're saying, right? Like we're making sure that the whole story is known. And we yeah. have to make sure that they understand that there is an accountability process. And it begins with our community. And in the very beginning, you know, back last year, I was telling y'all, documentation, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And that's all I asked for. Okay. Because that's the only way we can keep on saying this is what the community wants. Boom. Well, the Definitely. community wants status quo. Mm -hmm. The community wants, we have the zoning. They can put two family houses in that, in that area. We would not say a word. Two family houses is within the zoning, fine. They have to provide three parking spaces for every one of those houses off the street. We don't have any problem with that within the zoning that we've got. All right, now, when you look at those, those signatures on uh, petitions. Yes. Okay. okay, the first 24 pages on there are comments that the citizens made, there's 200 comments. I could have captured 9,000 comments. I wasn't gonna do that. Those are the first 200 comments from people, real people with their names on the first 24 pages. If you have a digital, if you have a digital as well, like if you couldn't print out the full number, but if you have the digital, oh, I would have, have to capture all yeah, those yeah, things, which I didn't yeah. do. Okay. 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 Let's say that you're board because you can actually download it through teach.org, and if you need to see the guidance and what to do, I can go over the phone. Okay. Yeah, well, right, those right, those right, first right, 200 so are all from Everything is captured, right? With what we're seeing is accountability, transparency. That's the kind of information, right? I just don't want the 200, I want the full 900. Okay. We can look into it. Okay. But that, we'll because printing out 9,000, uh, well, I wasn't going to do that. I captured the first 200. And those are real people that live in the neighborhood. You can check names with the phone book if there is such a thing anymore. But they do live here. They're real people. Thank you. But that's where I don't, when we're talking about what it is the information, we want to make sure that we are letting everyone have that opportunity. And, so, well, like, and you also have 9,000 signals. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I, can I wait, show there you? Was, oh, wait, sorry. I, I don't want to cut you no, off. I'm I, sorry, John. But safe. Terry, go ahead. How are you tonight? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Um, I just wanted to maybe bring something to light to you. I was at the St. Benedict's meeting, and at that meeting, you didn't seem open to us. And I think that's where the confusion started. With you, we, we didn't think that you were behind us. You were very put off. You had your mask on, you wouldn't take it off. You kept saying, what do you want? Tell me what you want. You knew what we wanted, but you didn't seem genuine. And I think that's where the people are feeling that you're not behind us. I don't want you to think we're attacking you, but I really felt that's where you went wrong. That's all. <laughs> and Terry knows, so Lord Harker Terry knows me. Uh, and Terry knows where I'm at with my community, right? We yeah. wake up during the summer, and we would clean all of Westchester Avenue under the train station. Uh, so I want to recognize her for that work as well, because we need to make sure that we are honoring our community leaders. So thank you, Terry. So a round of applause for Terry for that. More importantly, I want to be very, very clear. 
it wasn't just be like on St. Benedict's. I've been at this since last year, August 5th, checked my socials, I had put out a statement. And unfortunately, there are people who want to nitpick what I say. Mm -hmm. And I was, I've been very clear about it. So I want to just say, check August 5th of last year. It hasn't changed, and it has not, and it will not. Thank you. Wait, no, 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 I'm so sorry, because I told John, I know my... Thank you, this is public safety. All of you hear the racing and the donuts. This is this is a video I took home, this is on the highway. Look, I, I showed it to him, but look, these are all the cars lined up to race. Look at all the BMWs and the Marrows, look, on the hutch. And, then, and, and right up here, when you down towards all, off, you make the left over there, on Food Town, the don't you see the donuts right there? So several things. On their we, we are um, we are actually we having a conversation. And speeding down the road, they should put a speed bump. Well, okay. When you say they should put a speed bump, right. you know what I would need you to do, right? I'll call up. And then what? <laughs> it's a bus. It's a bus route, so they won't. It's it a bus route. But oh, then yeah. this is why we're fighting to make sure that we have control over our traffic. Well, the buses can't get through there anyway. That's true. That's true. But no, but look, this is where it comes down to like us working together, right? right? Um, for me, like the other piece and the other component that we're fighting for is speed cameras. Now I know that's controversial yeah. because right now it's like it seems to be hurting more folks than helping folks, right? Yeah. And it's because we have more control over where to put them. I see so many cars with no license. I mean, hurting Abby. There's no license plate so on these cars. I see my wife. I see my wife. I see my wife. I see cars. There's no license back license plate on them. And, that's and no we, registration stickers. And cars. that's where we need you, right? We need y'all. When you see it, and I hate to sound so cliche, see something, say something, but we need it, right? To have that conversation, like. I remember when I was a kid, they I was driving down my main bike down Lawton Law Avenue towards Charlie's Inn, and the cops took my bike. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and it's, how do we have these conversations and make sure that folks know what they can do, right? And it is, thank you for having this meeting, and what we'll do is give you all the resources you can share with them, and then we'll do a follow-up, right? Um, I'll let you know, so um, on Thursday, we're gonna have the conversation about the cameras, the home roll situation, and look, two things are very important to me. If we're gonna have speed cameras, let's have control as to where they go. Because these kids know exactly where they're at, and what do they do? I'm gonna go up to here, yeah. and then at 10 o'clock, 10.01, I'm gonna be having a party. And it's not, and that's not what we want. Um, look, I live on East Tremont, I hear it all the time. Um, and for me, it's like how do we best address this, it? and it is advocacy. I know it's a lot on us, right? It is a lot to call. It is a, but if we're not doing it, then who will? And that's why we need to work together. And I'm here to tell you that. Yeah, I have a quick question. When are the elections for council members? Rock so it's a, okay. So it's different. Um, last year, because we had the 2020 census, it's 2021, 2023, and 2025, and then 2025. It'll be four years. So because of the census, the 21 is broken. Instead of 21 to 25, it's broken into 21, 23. Yeah. Borough president, on the other hand, is 21 and 25. Uh, and then the state ones are even years. So it's 22, 24, and it's every two years. So that's state senate and assembly. Thank you. <laughs> In the minutes of the executive board meeting, executive board 10, there was someone that basically mentioned a conversation that they had with you, and this is not, you know, anything really too much, but something I think that I've been worried about as much as this, where you made a statement something like, uh, the council has dollars and the developers have ideas. And you were basically saying that we need to come up with you know, counter ideas. What, when you said the council, are the developers seeking city financing for any part of this project? Have they approached you about that? No, they haven't. No, no, no. no. All the conversation I've had is like, this is what my community wants. Yeah. Done. Because you know, like, it, it, I'm not here The reason, the reason I said that, it's interesting, I took a look at the Real Deal article, I don't know if you read that as well. According to the developers, they haven't secured financing. Yeah. Right. See? So, so I was wondering if they're trying to finagle our dollars. That's why I'm a little nervous about that. Right. Well, I'm just saying, 
haven't approached me on that. Okay. For me, Thank once again, it's like having talked to the community. Right? This is what they've told me. I recommend you use it with XYZ. Lend me the money instead. I'll open up full time over. That's what I want to show you. That meeting last week, the one of the developers, Sabino, whatever his name was, I just felt that he was very disrespectful with us. He's from Queens. He's an outsider. Mm -hmm. Like he was upset that we boycotted. She don't. She's across the street. She don't go there. They don't get a penny from us. That's our personal choice. <laughs> I walk all the way to Prusos. I live on the country club side, and I don't drive. I do all my shopping now. They're, they're so nice. They, they were always rude. I mean, I went to food town for years. So I was like, these people run a business. And I just felt like, who is he? From what I understand, he lives in a well-off neighborhood in Queens. And, also, and we, you know, we were all sticking together there as a community. That's not wrong with that. And due to the walking, that was like 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody that has an answer question, please. The thing that uh, bothered me about the last meeting was that they tried to make us feel bad that by refusing this project, we're turning down veterans until they put the thing on the screen. Out of 359 commits, 15 are made for veterans. I mean, you know, they're playing with our minds, playing with our emotions, and they're just being fake. Yeah, you know? lies. This and the other point I wanted to make is everybody that stood up and spoke for the project does not live in our community. They're a bunch of snowflakes. They think that they can stay So, you know, we worked a whole lot to get houses here. We're in our 50s, 60s, whatever. That you oh, get two jobs, get a house. He's complaining that he, maybe in his early 20s, that's all I can give him. And he's saying, we, I can't afford a house. Yeah, and then everybody that got to speak for the project was not from here. Why do they get to put their opinion in? That was five people. Yes, out of the 400 that was in the room. I know you weren't there. They sent five people to, 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 to say they were four and how wonderful this is. Five people. Four, 400 people in that room who live here are saying no because of zoning, keep the zone the way we are. And as far as the veterans, I belong to the uh, American Legion, and I've spoken to the commander. This is not an issue in this neighborhood for veterans. The, the American Legion, if you're a vet and you need something, anything, or it's money or an apartment, they help you. And they, they're not, they don't have a problem in this neighborhood. They send the guys taking down the signs as soon as we put them up. They got, they got they're one up again. Taking down. They're up again. Well, I think I, I also want to give credit to the American Legion. Unfortunately, we had an individual pass just recently and he was crossing the street. Um, and uh, they helped us locate this family because we can find an ex of kin. So we just have to really appreciate uh, the Legion and their work. Them, we uh, they take care of their own. No, Without they do. them, we they wouldn't do. be here. Yeah. Right. The exactly. flames wouldn't be here. Correct. Is that the real champion? Yeah. 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 On Trima? Yeah. And that's their, you know, like, and that's what we're seeing. Like, it's sticking together, right? Um, yes. Yes. And, and we have to give it to the American Legion. And so, thank you guys for that. All right. Yes. Yeah. How, how successful do you think we're going to have? With what? Fighting this With down zone, up zone. Keeping the, the down zone. Fighting the other. Yes. 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 So yes. Like yes. Now all of a sudden, like, you know, just want to make sure that, like, I said it since before August, but I put it in writing August of last year, and I said it just doesn't conform to our community. So I believe we will be successful, but, you know, we need to make sure that, once again, like, you let, you know, we have to be respectful of each other, and more importantly, who are we fighting for? If we're fighting for each other, uh, then let's protect each other too. Yes. Uh, and let's let's add the, the little extra care to one another, which means yeah. check up on a neighbor, um, make sure that they're doing all right. This has been a really tough road for all of us, and just yeah. just look out for one another. This world can be really crazy. And uh, I want to say something. Go for it. I've lived here all my life, and I've lived here a lot longer than any woman here. 
And my husband was a World War II vet. And then I in this neighborhood that didn't have a veteran. This neighborhood from World War II was depleted of every young man in every family. We had Korean vets, we had Vietnam vets, and they lived here. This is their home, always will be. And the other thing I'm gonna tell you all, I live in a block which has everybody under the sun. I say hello to everybody who passes my door. And I will continue to say that until I warn them out and they say hello back. My wife does the same thing. extend yourself and get them to become part of the community because they're new people here. They've come from places where nobody said hello or we even talk to them. So this is new. And they get into it after a while. And that's why this community is so special. It really is. Welcome to my husband's family in the 40s from Austria and welcome to my family in the 70s from Puerto Rico. So that's what we've about. always had. Now this is the thing that gets me is there wasn't any such thing as we didn't have Puerto Ricans or we didn't have Spanish and we didn't have we had every single nationality in this neighborhood from the time I was a young girl. <laughs> it didn't matter where you live in this area, you would walk around the block, there was somebody else from another nationality. So that's, I can't stand them when they say, oh, you, you, don't, have, you don't have people from everywhere. We do, we always have. I think, I think. Council member, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, the community board voted down the uh, the upzoning. The community, the community board was loud and clear against that. Uh, the community is loud and clear against that. Uh, where, what steps are you currently taking to fight this upzoning, and how can the community help you fight the upzoning? Okay, so kind of repeating earlier, what we're asking folks: letters, great, email us. Write them up, let us know. I am not for this. I live here. I'm not up for this because of XYZ. Keep it. We're going to keep it all stacked up and produce it and give it during the public participation phase. I said it. I said it in writing. I said it in public. I said it in private. Um, I'm not for it. And that's it. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. You need the community to go to the, to the Bronx. Uh, for a president's office, for the city hall. So she can ask, so, we so can the next move, right? And I think Mary Jane explained the process very well because you were here mm -hmm. for the other piece of it when yes. it 20 years ago. And it was basically the process, right? And so what we're asking folks to do is make sure when you're sending out information, A, make a copy of it. B, when you're sending it out, the, the more important people are we, uh, the borough president, DCP. Uh, so that way we all have the same information and more importantly, the next step is the process, right? The VP will be having her hearing. Um, it will be by her and so that's in her hall and she will announce that and that's that step and then there'll be public participation um, and then you can voice it again. Um, it is always being involved from the beginning to the end. And Mary Jane will produce those dates as those go on. So. All right, I'm good. Well, I'm so sorry. Can I keep yeah. I don't mean to, to go uh, beyond the upzoning, but I also want to bring up crime in the area. And, uh, you know, it has come to a point where, you know, we get, we get staffings, we, you know, we enter the subways, and, um, you know, people are just afraid to go to work, uh, especially everybody in Manhattan that works there, they, they prefer to, to stay at home. And Manhattan wants everybody to come back. So we need more police presence. We need to fund the police. 
and we need to um, to make a difference to bring back the way it was before. So that's very important on the next uh, November election. So what we're doing with that, Ray, uh, on our end is asking for additional officers and resources, but more importantly also providing the capital funding for cars too. Let's not forget our officers need cars. There was an incident here where one cop car was burnt. So like that's also what we're asking for. It's not just officers when we're talking about the, the everything that we need for them, the auxiliary vehicles, and have asked and well can attest to it, more officers, especially because the 45th is so spread so thin. 45th, I don't know if everyone knows, and I'll, I'll take a step back. The 45th covers co op from co op all the way down to the Lucas Point. It's a lot, it's a lot. That's a lot, and so I have been working with the administration and making sure that I get additional officers. Um, some of my colleagues in city council uh, don't need additional officers and have requested not to have uh, officers in their communities. Um, so I have been um, asking for those officers for our community because that's what we need. And it's not just a 45th thing, it's a 49th, PSA 8, um, even transit. Um, for us, transit here covers Pelham Bay to um, 42nd. So that's a lot of area that we need to cover, and it is asking folks um, to ask for more of that. So uh, I'd like to take the opportunity. If you haven't asked for additional costs from my office, please do, um, because it gives me more teeth to fight with. So thank you, and thank you for that, because we need to just ask me to ask them again, because we need it, and we can tell you how much resources I ask for all the time. So we need it, thank you so much. And with that, Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Dolan Thor, and uh, I'm on Waterbury Avenue. I was on Puritan since 1968, and I'm still here in the neighborhood. My son married, bought a house, had children. My son had to leave the neighborhood. The quality of life here for us has been very challenging, and I want to know what the community board is doing community affairs as well, I want to hear about the call 311, okay, because we've done that. It's gotten to the point where you want to be civilized, you think you can speak to a person and ask them, lower your music, don't get high in front of my house, don't drop your pants and urinate on my garden in the front of my house. So I feel like I'm stuck in between the Bermuda Triangle, between Havana, Linka, whatever that new place is, used to be Sapitos and uh, marijuana. So between the garbage, the arrogance of these people who don't even live in our neighborhood, okay? Waking me up, I have to get up at 3 a.m. to go to work. Anthony knows he sees me in the bakery every time he goes in for out the turn office, okay? So I crossed my butt to live the right way, to cooperate with my neighbors and be thoughtful and courteous to them. And I just don't understand how we give permission to a store that's about puffing and painting. This is supposed to be a residential no, community no, 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 neighborhood. No, 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 no. What's so, up with that? Um, and trust me, when I found out, trust me, um, I worked really hard with the captain um, because that is illegal and it got shut down. So um, if I don't know though, if y'all don't send me it, I don't know. And we really have to make sure that we're having this conversation now. As we all know, to be disrespectful to you, but you claim you live in our neighborhood. You believe in how we live, that you grew up here, you live, you love this neighborhood. How do you not know what's going on? And please don't tell me to put it digitally because I'm not a digital person. Okay, so more importantly, I just want to make sure that the quality of our neighborhood stays the same. I too am not for this upzoning. Okay, I think our neighborhood is already congested between parking and it's not even talk about snow removal. So my biggest concern is the quality of the neighborhood that I've been living in since 1968. Okay, I buried my parents, my in-laws, and I'm not ready to die yet, but it looks like my neighborhood is so rough lately, I believe that I'm back in Harlem when I was a kid, 118th Street between first and pleasant. That's crazy. Oh, oh, I would like to ask the guy on the person in front and say, hi, I love the music, but it's a little too loud for me. You know? I, that's all I'm asking for. What's the pop? I haven't seen a pop 
beat up and down my neighborhood. There used to be cops on horses all over the neighborhood. All the time they used to see them. What happened to that? They're still here, trust me. They were in front of my uh But it's 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 incredible. We don't see that anymore. I'm sorry, you broke up. You used to have police officers that would thought. They used to, you know, hang out with us, talk to us as kids. Okay, and then they used to participate when we had sports. My girlfriend, she, her child, she was a single parent. She raised her child, she was a coach of the hockey team. So crying out loud. You know, and it's just not fair, I feel, that if we're putting, we're paying taxes, our taxes are going up ridiculously every year. Okay, we're just not seeing what we need to see in our neighborhood for what we're investing. Because I'm, I'm invested, I'm rooted in here. And I'm not going anywhere. I just don't want to die here because I get into an argument with some asshole who came to my neighborhood to party. Yes. Most of us were very happy with Jimmy Vacca. I think I'm right with that. He endorsed her. He must know she can do the job we want done. So let's support her. And if you see pictures like that, or if you see a tape like this other man was taping, where someone says, we are not racist, and he takes out the word not, don't get all excited. They call it Photoshop, and what's the other word they use, Michael? They cut in what they want to cut in. So let's have faith in Marjorie, and let's trust her, and let's pray to God she can do the job. Thank you. I'm going to get that 